Planning a career is a lot like planning a cross-country trip. You can try to plan a trip down to the exact gas station you're going to use for each bathroom break, but there are often events that mess with your plans. You may have a flat tire, road may be closed and require a detour, and careers are similar. You may know where you are starting and you may have a destination in mind, however, life happens along the way and you may need to adjust. Additionally, careers are comprised of multiple jobs, like a long trip will involve multiple stops. As much as you may want to drive straight from Dallas to Chicago, you're probably going to have to drive through St. Louis or Memphis along the way. Similarly, you need to know what educational pursuits or what jobs will prepare you for the next step of your professional journey. Furthermore, the trip goes a lot smoother if you have a map. Asking for directions from a boss or a colleague, exploring your options using online resources, this type of career advice can be invaluable. Talk with somebody who has made the trip. They often know where the speed bumps are, the speed traps, construction, and they may know common and unproductive detours. Or on a positive note, they may also know a shortcut. Additionally, the shortest route, right, straight from Chicago to Dallas may not be the easiest route. You can try bulldozing from point A to point B, but a lot of the times it's more effective to just follow the existing roads. Now, if there's not roads, right, you get the map, you realize nobody's ever been there before, then maybe you do need to carve a new path, but you wanna work smarter, not harder, if it's possible. Finally, check your map occasionally and if needed, adjust your route or your destination. Life happens. Once or twice a year, look up to see, where am I? Do I still want to go to Chicago? Am I making progress towards my destination? And now that I know more, how does it influence my plans? In this video, we're going to go through that process. And we're going to talk about what is a liberal arts degree and what are its benefits. We're also going to talk about how do you plan a career and how is that different than applying for a job? And what are some of the basic components of career planning? A liberal arts degree is a little different than a professional or pre-professional degree like engineering because with a liberal arts degree we're generally gaining general knowledge across multiple disciplines and so some examples would be political science, sociology, history, English, psychology. And within these types of degrees, what's often being learned are transferable skills. So you may learn how to find, evaluate, organize, integrate, share, and apply information. Those skills are gonna be applicable across a number of different careers. And thus you have to be a little more purposeful as you're planning your career path so that you can figure out how do I use these skills within those jobs? How do I talk about these skills in relation to those jobs? And as I'm creating my documents like a resume, or as I'm preparing for an interview, how do I talk about this in relation to that specific career that I'm interested in? One of the benefits of this is it often promotes independent and thoughtful employees and more broadly citizens who can benefit our society in a number of different ways. Now, the other benefits of having a liberal arts degree is this flexibility. By being somewhat independent and thoughtful in how you take these skills and talk about them in relation to a job, you often are better able to adapt to a changing job market. And in fact, what we see is that early on, professionals, pre-professionals tend to peak more quickly than individuals who have liberal arts degrees. However, when we look at peak earning years, so 15, 20 years into the career, individuals who have liberal arts degrees actually tend to earn more than professionals and pre-professionals. So at first, one, two, three, four years into your career, it may appear that somebody who was an engineering major or some other major is making more and they are oftentimes. However, as you move through your career, 
there may be a higher capacity for career development and for salary development as you move on. Additionally, individuals with liberal arts degrees are often good at solving problems, particularly complex problems that have multiple perspectives involved because they often have a broader base of general knowledge that's been promoted. They can draw from that. They're often accustomed to evaluating information, integrating, synthesizing information from multiple sources, multiple disciplines, and that can be helpful when it comes to solving real world problems that don't have a simple, quick solution from just one area or one discipline. Because of the nature of this, it can make planning the career a little bit more difficult. And so you're not just looking for a single job, you're actually looking for multiple occupations. And thus there's this trajectory of the career. And with jobs, we're really interested in paying the bills and we need to do that, right? Early on in our careers, often that may be what we're doing. And especially as we're working through a degree, for instance. You just need a job that allows you to pay your bills and provides time and flexibility for you to work on your degree. However, as we move forward with a career, we still want to pay the bills, but we also want to provide meaning and purpose. We want to see that there is a bigger reason for why we're engaging in these activities. Additionally, we want to allow for growth and self-actualization. As we were talking about, a long trip is comprised of multiple stops and we're getting closer and closer to a larger, longer destination as we move forward. And so how do we do that? When we are considering the career, there's two major areas, and I borrowed this from Anderson and Van de Hey, where you're learning about yourself and you're learning about the world of work. And so you wanna expand your knowledge, your self-awareness. You also wanna expand your knowledge in regards to occupations, potential occupations, and as you learn about potential occupations, you want to deepen your knowledge about those occupations so that you can make a well-informed decision. And so once you have a good amount of self-awareness and a good amount of occupational information, then you can begin to enter this deciding phase, or what I often talk about as an integrating phase, where you're applying your self-concept and integrating that with the occupational information that you've gathered in order to decide what job or what group of occupations are going to be beneficial at this stage. Now, the other side is when you read this work by Anderson and Van de Hey, you'll see that they talk about career planning is really going to involve multiple diamonds because I enter a job and I realize this is a great fit for now. But as I plan the next stage of my career, I begin to learn more about myself as I gain information through that role. Additionally, as I encounter individuals in similar roles, I learn more about those occupations and thus I may decide on a career transition at a later point and I may re-enter this career planning phase at that point and explore more and then decide on a new career. So how do we go about this self-exploration process? There are formal self-explorations like the Strong's Interest Inventory, Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, and various value assessment skill profilers. And in fact, some of them are already included in your tuition. So if you go to wtmu.myplan.com, it actually has a number of assessments where you can gain some information about yourself. For the moment though, you can even do a little bit of informal self-exploration. You can consider what are my priorities in life? For example, can you rank the following in order of importance, family, finances, health, profession, status, friendship. If you're interested in prioritizing your family, then you may want a career that's flexible. And so you may think about, well, as I have children, I could be a teacher or a school psychologist, or I could go into private practice where I have more control over my own schedule. And so you may want to consider how is this career going to allow me to spend my time. And that's where the second part comes in. You can imagine your perfect week. How much time would you spend working, reading, writing, speaking, parenting, or relaxing? And you can consider a career that's going to allow you the blend that best fits you based on your priorities. 
Additionally, how much time would you spend sitting versus standing? Is a desk job a good fit for you? And even within a desk job, do you need a Vera desk that allows you to stand up part of the day? How much time would you spend outside versus inside? Additionally, would you spend time alone versus talking with colleagues versus talking with large groups? What energizes you and what drains you? And you may have to do a little bit of all of it, but the balance of it could be a better fit in one area or one career than another. And even once you look and begin to delve into a career, you may find that at one company, you spend more time sitting or you spend more time in group meetings. So because of that, one career may be a good fit, but a company within that particular occupation may not necessarily be a good fit. You can also think about what brings value to your work. Is it that you enjoy checking off tasks or do you enjoy reaching a certain result? And if you reach that result, do you need recognition? Do you like helping individuals, collaborating with individuals, helping larger social groups? Would you rather create something new or learn something new? Do you want to challenge yourself? Do you want to challenge the status quo? Do you want to influence or lead others? And probably multiple pieces of this and maybe even some other things bring value to your work. And you need to be aware about that for yourself as you consider your career. There may be certain types of careers that allow you to help social groups more than others. But even within a career, there may be certain roles where you're able to receive recognition more than a different role. And so maybe that role is a better fit for you than a different role. And as you explore this, you can think about what were your favorite courses? And importantly, what did you like most about those courses? That tells you a bit about what you find intrinsically motivating potentially, what you find valuable, what you find a, as a priority. Additionally, think about a professor, a friend, or a colleague who knows you well. How would they describe you? And how does that then relate to or connect with a career that you might look into? Once you know about yourself, then you need to also, and probably simultaneously, begin to explore occupations. And you can do some of that online. So onetonline.org is a good place to look at that. Also, you can look at the Occupation Outlook Handbook, and that's provided by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So bls.gov forward slash OOH is going to get you there. And you can also do some in-person experiences. So you can schedule some informational interviews. And the process through which you can do that, there's some resources provided by Career Services. You can also do some job shadowing and interning. And you can assist in research, especially if you're interested in grad school. A lot of the time you need research experience. And even if you don't want to go on into a research intensive position, and you don't want to go into academia or be a professor or be a researcher or work for a government agency where you'll do research, you still often need that research experience to be competitive. And by being involved in that research experience, you're going to learn more about it. And you may find that I absolutely love doing focus groups, but I don't love analyzing the data. Or I enjoy pulling together data from multiple sources and then reaching a conclusion or a hypothesis in order to further research in another area. Through that process, you're going to gain experiences and you're going to get to see which parts of this do I enjoy, which parts of this do I not enjoy, and then you can ideally integrate together that information and you can find an occupation that's going to allow you to feel valued and meaningful. You're going to find an occupation that fits with your ideal weekly schedule. Do you like writing at 2 a.m. or does that not fit your schedule because you have kids and you have to be up at six or seven to get them to school are there occupations that better fit your priorities or conflict with your priorities like do you need summers to be more flexible or do you need to be off during the summer as an academic i love having flexible summers i still write i engage in research i do things during the summer i'll teach an online course but I have a lot of opportunity to travel with my kids, for instance, during that time. As a teacher or as a school psychologist, similarly, you can find an occupation that if family is a priority for you, you can balance that. 
But if status is a priority, maybe you push yourself more in the research area. You use that summertime as an academic to do research, publish research, crank out papers and articles and everything else so that the people within your field see the value that you're adding and recognize that value. And as you're going through this integration process, one of the resources that WT provides is career coaching. And so you can go in and through career services, look at their tools and you'll see that there's a link and you can sit down with a career coach, work through this integration process.